Hey YouTube, Valley Girl 5678 here. It's time to talk about this new album by Pink Panthers, Heaven Knows. This is the debut album from Gen Z internet pop R&B girly. This album follows 2021's To Hell With It mixtape slash EP, which was very well received and solidified her as one of the main ones to watch in pop. Pink Panthers does have a very unique and individual and specific style, so it makes sense that sonically this album doesn't differ too much from To Hell With It. However, the songs on here are generally more developed. Thematically, the album feels like a natural progression from To Hell With It, which generally express themes of insecurities, depression, and youthful yearning. On this album, those themes are covered, but in a more grown-up way, with mainly a quite cohesive theme of death through loss and love. That is obviously represented in the title, Heaven Knows. In my opinion, the first half of the album is a bit stronger than the second half of the album, with the exception of a couple standouts, which I will get to. But yeah, honestly, the entire first half of the album slaps in every way possible. The opening track, Another Life Feet Rama, opens up the album on and in theme immediately, sonically with organ instrumentation, which is accompanied by a first verse of lyrics that lay out this theme pretty clearly. The chorus melody is so good, the Rama verse is great, and the electric guitar instrumental outro goes off. And it actually kind of reminds me of how she used bagpipes in her track Angel off of the Barbie movie soundtrack. Track two, True Romance, shows Pink Pantherist, focusing on the theme of the relationship of love and fan culture. The line, I've been a fan of you since 2004, is so funny to me because she was literally three years old in 2004. And I feel like that adds to the like campiness slash over exaggeration, which represents the kind of absurdity of the phenomenon of fan culture. Like it's similar sentiments to, I got a tattoo just to show you how much I care. The production on this track mirrors the chaotic sentiments of the song very well, with the cherry on top of the like crowd cheering noises sprinkled throughout the song. Themes of fame continue with track three, Mosquito, which was the lead single for this album, but with a lens more on Pink Panthers's newfound fame and her relationship with it, being most specifically on the song, her new relationship with money and material things. This death theme of the album is explored a little bit in the choruses, showcasing that her newfound relationship with money has left her feeling like it's kind of the only thing that she's worth and that she truly owns, to the point of her kind of like talking about money as if it's her boyfriend, with double entendre lines like, now you're sitting in accounts because I'm too scared to take you out. The sentiments in the song are also actually mirrored a bit later on the album on tracks 10 and 11, Blue and Feeling. Track 4, The Isle, is my favorite song on the album for sure. Interestingly, this song actually samples Super Lonely by Bene, who similarly to Pink Panthers got their start through virality on TikTok. It's also interesting because the themes of Super Lonely are similar to the themes on this track. The production slaps, the chorus slaps, the entire song slaps. Track 5, Nice to meet you, feet Central C is actually similar to the opening track Another Life, not just because of the rap feature, but also because this track also opens with the theme of death through love, with the first line of the song being, I pray I'll die before my baby. It's a very slay love song through the most trappy moment on the album, and I find the juxtaposition of the themes in Central C's verse to the rest of the song being Pink Panthers very interesting. It seems like it's almost like exemplifying the situation that Pink Panthers has found herself in, but through the perspectives of both people involved in the situation. Track 6, Bury Me, Feet Kalela, iconic. Obviously, death themes bury me. The Kalela feature works so well, especially since the production is like almost a 50-50 blend of their two respective sounds. The won't you bury me, can't you bury me question that happens throughout the song is very interesting given that based on the other lyrics of the song, it's clear that she can't be truthful with herself or with her lover because they simply won't let her in. And it honestly kind of reminds me of these Lana lyrics from her song Thunder off of Blue Bannisters. Just do it, don't wait. Like just end it, just kill the love already. Just bury me already. I love the true R&B vibes that Kalela's feature and involvement in the song gives. Obviously to me Pink Panthers has always been like very much like a like bedroom pop slash R&B type of girl, so it's really nice to see her leaning into those R&B vibes. Track 7, Internet Baby Interlude, is where the album begins to get a little less effective and a bit more repetitive with tracks like Blue, Feelings, and Feel Complete. However, there are some standouts, including track 8, Ophelia, which has notable collaborator Danny L. Harl, who was the main collaborator on Caroline Polachek's album from earlier this year, Desire I Want to Turn Into You. I love this track for so many reasons, but the main reason is the way that she plays with this theme of death 
death through love through the story of Ophelia from Shakespeare's Hamlet. Not to mention that the production and instrumentation of the track is very reminiscent of the aesthetics of Ophelia and honestly just like Shakespearean times. And it's just overall a great track. Track 12, Capable of Love, was the second single for this album rollout and is a stunning track, mostly thanks to the meticulous crafting of the song through the writing and the production. For example, I love how the first chorus is instrumental and then the next chorus she layers lyrics on top of that instrumental. It's just one of the many reasons why this song builds so beautifully and to me honestly really feels like the culmination of the sonic and thematic themes on the album. However, the album does finish with Boys a Liar Part 2 feat Ice Spice, a song we all know and a song we all love, but I do wish that Capable of Love was the closer. It makes way more sense to me. However, I do understand why not including it on the album would have been silly and a missed opportunity given its success. It kind of reminds me of Megan Thee Stallion tagging Sweetest Pie on the end of Traumazine. So while there are a few mid moments, there are no bad moments on this album. In fact, I think this is a great debut album for Pink Panthers that absolutely shows that she is capable of turning her internet music into something much more substantial and full and sustainable. And I'm just an absolute stan. I'm a Pink Panther stan. I'm gonna give it a 7.5. Thank you so much for watching this video. I would love to hear what you thought about this album in the comments. Let me know what your favorite tracks were. If you haven't already yet, make sure to like the video and hit that subscribe button. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Both are linked below. And also follow me on Spotify where I have a playlist for everything. But yeah, thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!